Lesson 6.6, .6, add and subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators. Mixed numbers are numbers that are made of a whole number and a fraction, like one and one third is a mixed number. We have the whole number one and the fraction one third. We can add and subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators by finding a common denominator for the fraction parts of the mixed numbers. We can use the common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators. Then we add or subtract the fraction, followed by adding or subtracting the whole numbers. Here we have the mixed number 3 and 2 fifths, and we're adding it to 1 and 1 half. We need to find a common denominator. We learned how to do that in video 6.4 that's linked in the description. We can just multiply 5 times 2 the denominators to get the common denominator 10. We find 5 times 2 is equal to 10, so we need to multiply the numerator by the same factor 2. 2 times 2 is 4. It's equal to 3 and 4 tenths as an equivalent mixed number and fraction. 1 and 1 half, we need to turn the denominator into a 10. 2 times 5 is equal to 10, so we multiply the numerator by 5. We get 5 tenths. Now we can add 3 and 4 tenths plus 1 and 5 tenths. We add the numerators, 4 plus 5 is 9. We use the denominator, the common denominator. We add the whole numbers, we get 4 and 9 tenths. Make sure that our sum or difference is written in simplest form when 1 is the only common factor for the numerator and denominator. We can begin by estimating the sum or difference to be able to check our answer for reasonableness to see if it makes sense. We have 3 and 2 fifths plus 1 and 1 half using benchmarks that we learned in video 6.3. This is very close to a half. 2 is almost half of 5, so we can call this mixed number 3 and a half. We have 1 and a half. 3 and a half plus 1 and a half is equal to 5, so we know our sum should be close to 5. We had 4 and 9 tenths when we added, and 9 tenths is very close to 1 whole, plus the 4 whole, that would be close to 5. So yes, our sum is reasonable. We can use a common denominator to subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators. We have 3 and 1 fifth minus 1 and 1 sixths. 5 times 6 is 30, so we can use 30 as the common denominator. 5 times 6 is 30, so we need to multiply the numerator times 6. We have 3 and 6 thirtieths. 6 times 5 is 30, so we need to multiply the 1 times 5. We have 1 and 5 thirtieths. We subtract the numerator. 6 minus 5 is 1. We use 30, the denominator. We remember the whole numbers. 3 minus 1 is 2. We have 2 and 1 thirtieth. If we use 3 as a benchmark for 3 and 1 fifth, because it's, this 1 fifth is very small, we can just estimate this as a 3. We can estimate this as a 1. We can think of 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. 2 and 1 thirtieth is very close to 2, so our difference is reasonable. Use a common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators to find the sum, then write in simplest form. We have 6 and 2 thirds plus 3 and 1 twelfth. We think 3 times 12 is 36. We can use 36 as our common denominator. We need to find 3 times some number is 36. That would be a 12, so we need to multiply 2 times 12 to get a 24. 12 times some factor is 36. That would be a 3. So now we know we need to multiply the numerator times 3. We're doing addition. We add the numerators. 24 plus 3 is 27. We use the common denominator, 36. Don't forget to add the whole numbers. 6 plus 3 is 9. We have 9 and 27 36. The common factor of 27 and 36 is 9. So we can write it in simplest form by doing 27 divided by 9, which is 3, and 36 divided by 9, which is 4. We have 9 and 3 fourths. And we know our answer is in simplest form when 1 is the only common factor 
of the numerator and denominator. Here we need to subtract 8 and 5 eighths minus 2 and 1 sixth. And we think the 5 is almost half of 8, so we can estimate that to be 8 and a half. 2 and 1 sixth is very close to 2, so we can think 8 and a half minus 2, which is equal to 6 and a half for our estimate. We can find the multiples of 8 and the multiples of 6 to find their least common multiple. If we don't want to multiply 8 times 6 to find the con common denominator, we can list their multiples and choose their least common multiple. 8 times 3 is 24, so we need to multiply the numerator 5 times 3. That's a 15. 6 times 4 is 24, so we need to multiply the numerator times 4 to get 4 24 ths. Now we can subtract 15 minus 4 is 11. We use that common denominator. Remember the whole numbers, 8 minus 2 is 6. And for this 11 24 ths, 11 is about half of 24. So 11 24 ths is about half. That means we have about 6 and a half which is near our estimate. So yes, our difference is reasonable. To add or subtract fractions, we need to write equivalent fractions that have common denominators. So the fractions will be made up of equal sized pieces. If we have 2 thirds minus 1 sixth, we need to give them like denominators. 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. 2 thirds has an equivalent fraction of 4 sixths. Now we can subtract 4 minus 1 is 3. We get 3 sixths. It needs to be simplified to 1 half. So what happened was we had 2 thirds and we were trying to take a sixth away. But these are not in sixths. If we switch to 2 thirds to be 4 sixths, we can take 1 sixth away. That will leave 3 sixths, which is equal to one half. Bob has three pieces of wood, a length of two and one fourth feet, one and a half feet, and one and one third feet. He needs a total of six and a half feet of wood for his project. How many more feet of wood does Bob need? So we think we can add the lengths he has, then subtract the sum from the amount he needs to find the difference. He has two and one fourth, one and a half, one and one third. We need to give them like denominators. They can all meet at 12. They all have 12 as a multiple. Four times three is 12, so we multiply one times three is three for the numerator. Two times six is 12, so we multiply one times six for the numerator. We get a six. Three times four is 12, so we multiply the numerator one times four and get a four. Now we can add their numerators. We have a 6 and a 4, which is a 10, plus 3 more is 13. We have 13 twelfths. We add the whole numbers. 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. We have 4 and 13 twelfths. Now, 4 and 13 twelfths is the same thing as 4 plus 12 twelfths with the same numerator and denominator that can equal a 1 plus 1 twelfth. That means we have 4, 5, and 1 twelfth feet. So that's how much he has. He needs six and a half. So we write six and a half minus five and one twelfth. They need to have the same denominator and they can meet at 12. And two times six is 12, so we multiply one times six is six. We subtract six twelfths minus one twelfth is five twelfths. Then we do the whole number, six minus five is one. We see he needs one and five twelfths feet more of wood for his project. So even if we have three add-ins or four add-ins or more, we can give them like denominators by finding where all three denominators can meet. A four, a two, and a three as a denominator can meet at 12. Here we're gonna use some higher order thinking skills. We have a table here, we, say, we see it says paint Dave uses in ounces. There's blue paint and yellow paint that'll make a shade of turquoise, teal, or sea foam. And Dave mixes the amount of blue from one shade of paint with the amount of yellow from a different shade of paint. 
he mixes the batch so he will have the greatest possible amount of paint. What amount of blue and yellow from which shades are used in the mixture? Now, what's very important is whatever the amount he used from the blue needs to be a different shade from the yellow. So we're looking for the greatest possible amount. We can't use the blue from sea foam, which is a big number. It's four and two thirds, but the greatest number for yellow would be four and two thirds. And it says a different shade of paint, so we can't use them both from sea foam. These only have a one for a whole number. The greatest whole number for yellow would be the four. And we can't use the same number from sea foam because it needs to be a different shade. So the next greatest number would be three and eight ninths. So three and eight ninths ounces of blue from the teal shade, we'll use this one, is the greatest. And four and two thirds ounces of yellow from the sea foam shade is the greatest. The shades need to be different. So we couldn't choose sea foam for both we used the next greatest as teal. And how many ounces of paint will Dave have? We need to add three and eight ninths plus four and two thirds. Nine is a multiple of three, so we can use nine as our common denominator. Three times three is nine, so we need to multiply the numerator two by three, which is six. We're adding these together, we add the numerators, eight plus six is 14. We use that common denominator, nine. We add the whole numbers, three plus four is seven. We have seven and 14 ninths. Seven and 14 ninths is equal to seven plus nine ninths with the same numerator and denominator plus five ninths. That means we have seven, eight, and five ninths ounces. Mrs. Kim used nine and three-fifths pounds of flour to make loaves of bread and three and one-fourth pounds of flour to bake cookies. How much more flour did she use to bake bread than cookies? And think, we could subtract to find the difference. Nine and three-fifths is very close to nine and a half, and three and one-fourth is close to three. Nine and a half minus three is six and a half pounds. That's our estimate. We find a common denominator, we could just multiply the denominators. Five times four is 20. That means we need to multiply the numerator three times four, which is 12. Four times five is 20, so we need to multiply this numerator by five. We get five twentieths. We need to subtract the numerators. 12 minus five is seven. That's seven twentieths. Remember the whole numbers. Nine minus three is six. We have six and seven twentieths pounds more flour for the bread. So be careful as you're working with mixed numbers. You don't want to forget about adding or subtracting the whole numbers. Our next lesson, 6.7, we're going to subtract mixed numbers by regrouping or renaming. Remember, I'm on Facebook if you need me, and I'm on Twitter. Remember to hit the like button and Remember that you can go to PayPal or Patreon.com to help me and the dogs out. Bye.